Hello everybody, Chase KFI of IRE here. This is gonna be my first YouTube video ever. Uh, I think I posted one like years ago that was literally just audio, a recording of my first QSO uh, when I was a very new ham. I'm still, I would consider myself a new ham. I got my license back in 2020, so it's been about three years that I've been a ham. Hopefully I'll be able to start making more videos and I'll be able to bring some more helpful tips and get more people interested in ham radio because ultimately that's the goal of all of us as hams is to get more people into amateur radio uh, interested in it get them on more modes and things like that and before i start the video just the main mode that i normally use is going to be dmr that's my primary uh, mode that i use um, when i'm out and about when i'm at home, I'm usually on DMR. I'll mess around on some of the analog repeaters every now and then, but I primarily focus on DMR and really coming from a scanner background like I did, uh, di digital modes is what really got me interested in ham radio to begin with. I'll make a more in-depth video on that later on down the road, but today we're gonna be focusing on this, the Open Spot 4 Pro. It just came in the mail. A couple of hours ago and I've been playing with it and I gotta say I really love this little thing compared to my Pi Star Jumbo spot that I've had for probably the last few years since I got into ham radio I mean I've used this thing non-stop it's been a fantastic little device and it's been great for what I needed to but I have to say that the user interface online, it's a little bit clunky compared, especially compared to using the Shark RF open spot. I've already set up a couple of profiles on it and I gotta say it's fantastic. It's very well built. Um, it's just all around a fantastic hotspot. Uh, the build quality is really great. And I mean, I expect it a lot cause I pay a lot for it. And it's really hard to compare them because they're kind of different and they're definitely different price points. So you have a little bit different expectations of what you're going to get when you buy both of them, but they definitely are pretty similar. And it's two different, completely two different platforms, to be honest with you. The MNBVM uses the PyStar platform and the OpenSpot uses, I guess, their proprietary platform, which I, I don't really understand all of it. With this video, I'm going to start fresh with a, another profile just so I can kind of show you just kind of how I set mine up to begin with and like I said this is a fantastic hotspot I mean the build quality like I said is just great I'm very happy with it so far and I'm really looking forward to getting to play with it a little bit more and see really what all it can do and hopefully eventually get into more of the cross cross mode things and stuff like that you know the DMR the different modes and all that I don't really know how all that works right now I've watched some videos on it but I haven't really figured it out. I've just been kind of jumping around on talk groups on the open spot so far uh, since I've had it in the last few hours. Not knocking the Pi Star at all. This was my favorite toy for ham radio and probably my most used uh, toy besides my 878. And it's just been fantastic. I mean, like I said, it's a little bit clunky. It's kind of a pain to change. Uh, Wi-Fi networks, things like that. It's definitely got its drawbacks. I'll probably make a more in-depth comparison video of the two later on down the road as well. But really today, like I said, today the main objective of this video is just going to be the quick setup of this thing and just kind of going through it and setting it up and getting the OpenSpot 4 on the air. So let's go ahead and get started on that. So what I'm showing you right now, this is the OpenSpot web interface. I'm not going to go through the whole Wi-Fi setup thing because there's a ton of videos on that. But I'm gonna go through today on just kind of a quick setup and how I set mine up. I know some people set theirs up differently and things like that, but this is just the main setup to get you on the air with the OpenSpot 4 Pro. So first things first, you gotta start by inputting your owner information, which is your call sign, your DMR ID, NXDN ID. I don't know my NXDN ID, so I'm not gonna be entering that. And I don't have an NXDN radio either right now, so. I'm gonna start putting in my call sign. KF5, IRE. And then it automatically, I didn't know this until earlier, but it automatically imports your DMR ID as well. And then you select your web interface mode. Do you wanna use dark mode, light mode? I prefer dark mode because really, is there any other mode than dark mode? I don't really think so. After you select your owner information and your web interface mode, you're gonna click save. 
and then you're gonna you're gonna select the type of your radio. Uh, it's got options for DMR, D-Star, C4FM, uh, which is I think the ASU System Fusion. Uh, you've got options for NXDN, P25, POXAG, which I don't really know what POXAG is. You can set up APRS, you can do APRS on this thing and you know broadcast your APRS location. Your radio frequency is going to be your hotspot uh, frequency and I personally choose to use 446 dot, I think it's 15, yeah, 446 dot 15 and then you're going to do your color code. I usually just do a color code of 1, then I'm going to use the Brandmeister network because that's the one that I typically use. Uh, so I'm going to use Brandmeister Network. The other ones work just as fine. I don't use the other two. And then after you select your service, you put in your call sign, you put in your DMR ID, and you put in your uh, hotspot password or server password as they call it on here. You're going to, and you select what talk group you want to link, you're going to click connect. And then you're going to hear it beep. I don't know if you heard that beep. Now on mine, you're going to see a little bit different things because I have APRS enabled on this radio. So it's sending APRS. And I'm not going to go through setting up APRS on here just because I don't know how to do it. And mine's just going completely entirely through my Anytone 878. Really, you're up and running in five minutes or less on this hotspot. I think that's incredibly fast. It took me forever to get this thing up and going. I had a lot of things that I had to dig through online to find out. I had to watch several tutorial videos on getting it set up. Even when I updated the firmware on it, like just a few days ago before I decided to buy the open spot, I had a ton of issues getting this thing to work and a lot of things you have to remember when you go back and forth and you can't do all kinds of things. It's limited. Like I said, that's, another, that's for another video where I compare and contrast the two. Again, I'm just focusing on the open spot today. So I've got APRS sending on this, so I'm seeing a connection to the server. Uh, and I'm going to key the radio on Parrot Talk Group on Brandmeister and we'll see if it actually works. It says it's connected. I trust it is connected. And I'm going to go ahead and do a test here on Parrot KI5 IRE testing 1, 2, 3, testing 1, 2, 3 on my OpenSpot 4 Pro. Yeah, all right and that sounds really good I mean I'm pretty happy with how that sounds honestly and I mean it's up and going but there's still some other settings that you might want to set up on these so I'm gonna kind of go through some of those and kind of explain a little bit about what they are at least my interpretation of what they are scrolling through here it's got connectors, you can switch your connectors and things like that, and you can go from DMR to MMDBM and just all these other different connectors. Uh, I personally leave mine on homebrew slash MMDBM. I think it's a combination of both. Uh, I'm not really sure. I haven't messed with that or dug into that setting necessarily. DMR, homebrew, MMDBM, these are just your settings for your DMR connector. Um, and again, modem receive, receive, receive and transmit frequencies. That's gonna be the same for me. I use the simplex. Uh, I just use my DMR hotspots in simplex mode. That's just what I personally do. And then you select your protocol, which can be either homebrew or MDVM. Like I said, homebrew is what I like. Now, I'm not really sure the difference of both, but homebrew, like I said, worked a lot better for me when I set it up. Yeah, you select your brand by your server. It's got your server address and your port, what port you're going into, your call sign, uh, your DMR ID and I think the coolest thing that I like about this is that the so far my server password or hotspot security password from Brandmeister has really stayed in here a lot better than my uh, Pystar. It seems like every time I shut off my Pystar I would have to re-input the password and go in there and get it to load and all these things and it just it took forever uh, so you know this is just much faster and I like the user interface, like I said, a lot better. Backup server, I don't really know what all that is. I uh, haven't looked into that yet. Um, I guess you can set up a backup server, like maybe if it's the server that's down, like Brandmeister 3102's down, I can go through Brandmeister 3103, I guess is what that is. Like I said, haven't messed with that. I come over here to the tools menu. There's some things in here that I think are pretty cool. For instance, the quick calls feature that they have on here is, I think, pretty unique. Basically, you can set up different talk group shortcuts 
and you can click those to make a call like uh, just different calls on there so when I click uh, private call 4000 watch what happens on my radio Not linked. it sends a private call uh, command over the Brandweiser server to the server and sends out the private call and disconnects me. And the Brandweiser manager, like I said, there's API keys and static talk groups and dynamic talk groups, all that. You can set all that. But to do the static talk groups, dynamic talk groups here in the open spot user interface without having to go into the Brandmeister uh, website like the repeater settings and all that or whatever they call it hotspot settings or self-care any of that stuff you have to put in the API key which you get in Brandmeister self-care um, and you just put it in there uh, and you click save you can do SMS chat over DMR through the open spot user interface which I think is great you don't have to try to use the you know the small keypad like the Nokia phone keypad on the Anytones or whatever radio you're going through, you can do it straight from the interface here uh, on the open spot and you can put your message in there, your destination IDs, you can see messages going and coming, uh, and you can send them over network or modem, um, you can send them private or group, just all these different options. And then configuration profiles, like I said, I set a few of those up earlier. Um, uh, different really it's for different settings I guess get the, across different ones so basically you can recall different settings a lot faster so I can recall one for my for my if I'm using my jetpack uh, mobile hotspot or if I'm using my iPhone um, or if I'm just at home I can just select my home Wi-Fi network based off of that and it'll recall that uh, you can copy and paste the uh, different profiles which is pretty handy so basically once I have my jetpack one completely configured. Basically when I have my jetpack profile completely configured I just took it and copied it across all three of those and all I did was change the Wi-Fi network on it. Uh, voice announcements, I haven't really figured out what all these are yet but I noticed that I'll get some voice announcements on some of my stuff on the open spot. I, I just don't know too much about it to know exactly what they are. You can do a low battery announcement. Uh, I guess a, profile announcement that tells you whatever you have to set up a, a talk group ID and it sends it out the open spot will send it out over a talk group uh, this one's kind of cool so I mean if you drop this in the car or something and you can't find it I mean it's it's pretty thin it's I mean not very big at all um, you can hit find my device and it'll send you Morse code uh, find my device thing battery low alarm which I haven't gotten the battery low enough yet to set that off uh, beep profile number on startup so I'm guessing when it starts up it'll beep once for profile one and so on and so forth and then you can power down reboot reset your configuration file and reset all config files um, all in the settings menu uh, network just kind of shows your network settings um, and then of course you've got user manual um, the open saw user manual which is nice that you can do that um, all within the app so this is what the app looks like when it starts up um, pretty simple I mean you click the computer icon and it takes you back to the uh, the web interface that we were on earlier and this one takes you to the RF link app open spot connected to brand micer three one zero two link static talk group three one four zero and three one four eight and then that's just an announcement that's one of those announcements that we saw earlier in the menus um, that you can change and then basically you have this log uh, that just shows you your the calls either that you've made or that you've received uh, that's pretty cool to have on there uh, the fact that you can have a PTT that goes straight from your DMR hotspot into the server and comes back out you don't need a radio to use it that's pretty cool so that's pretty much it i just kind of wanted to show you guys just kind of a little bit about the menus and things like that on the shark rf open spot four um like i said this is a fantastic little device this thing is a great great hotspot. this is i've had the 
MMDVM Pi-Star hotspot that I've used for, I don't know, three years now, two, three years now, and this has been great. I mean, it's it works, you know, that's all you can ask. Uh, I think it's the Jumbo Spot's the actual name of this model. It has been great. The menus aren't great. The menus are definitely clunky um, and hard to navigate compared to the open spot menus that are just really well laid out. The user interface of this thing is just so much better than the Jumbo Spot. And I think another great feature of the Open Spot 4 is that it has USB C inputs on it. So you can charge it via USB C, so it's going to charge a lot faster. And USB C is becoming so common now, too that it's a lot more easier to find a USB-C cable than it is a USB micro cable like you see here on the Pi Star hotspots. And again, not knocking the Pi Star hotspots, they're great for the money you get. It's a heck of a hotspot for 100, I think I paid $100 for my jumbo spot or whatever this thing's called. And then I think another thing too that just really sucked about the Pi Star and that I really like about the open spot is the boot up time. This thing boots up so fast. I don't have to hardly spend any time waiting on it to boot up. By the time I get the radio turned on, it's pretty much booted up. And another thing, internal battery on this thing. So compared to the Pi Star, where I gotta have the Pi Star, and then I gotta go connect it via USB micro and run a cable to a hotspot in order to get it to work. And then compared to this, you just turn it on. You just turn the hot spot, the open spot on. So really all this video was supposed to be was just my initial reaction and opinion on the open spot for just basically based off of the first couple hours that I've had it and played with it. Uh, and that coming from a new ham uh, who has only messed around with the Pi Star MMDVM hotspots for the last three years. Um, I've never played with the Shark RF Open Spot 4 or any of the other open spots or any other any other hotspots for that matter before I got the Open Spot 4 besides the MMDVM Pi Star. Um, so I just really wanted to get my opinion coming from a younger ham and doesn't really understand everything about DMR or the other modes and all that. And there's a lot of things that I want to learn about this. Um, so that's really why a huge reason why I bought the Open Spot 4 um, was just for that. It was just, I think it's going to be a lot funner to learn on. And it's, it's a lot funner when you have a good user interface. And I will do a full review and comparison video eventually on the Open Spot 4 versus the MMDVM Pi Star. Uh, it's kind of like a little bit, in my opinion, of an apples to oranges comparison because you're paying 300 some odd dollars for the Open Spot 4 versus like 100 for the MMDVM Pi Star that I bought three years ago. I'm hoping to start putting out more content on my channel. Um, I want to get active on this channel and actually use it. I've had it created for a few years, but I've never actually put a video up like this before. So I do want to get active on it and start making some more videos and just kind of see where this thing takes me and just learn ham radio together. That's kind of the whole objective of this channel is I'm a young ham. I would consider myself a young ham. I've had my license for three years. But there's still a lot I don't know about ham radio in the way that radios work, whether it be in digital modes or it be in analog stuff. There's a lot of stuff that I want to get into. I really want to get into some HF stuff and building antennas and things like that. So I'm going to be doing some of that stuff. I'm planning to make some videos about all that as I do that. So just be on the lookout for that. And like I said, I'm going to try to be active on this channel, start making some videos and stuff like that. And maybe I'll make an about me video soon where you just kind of just tell you about me, about how I got into ham radio and my favorite things about ham radio and what I've learned about ham radio and just all the things that excite me in ham radio because there's a lot of stuff in ham radio that is very exciting so like i said i hope to make some more videos pretty soon and i will see you guys later